With most patients in the hospital, um, they are an, uh, of the older generation, and so they've got sensory issues. So they've got problems with hearing, vision, touch, anything like that. Um, with hearing, um, some things that most of the people that are uh, have damaged hearing are people who are older or people who have been in like a big accident where there was an explosion close by. Um, patients with otorosclerosis or tinnitus. Um, some things that you need to do as a nurse are making sure that you're standing on their better side. If they've got one ear that's worse than the other, make sure they stand on the good side so that they can hear you a little bit better. Make sure that you talk slowly, talk loudly. Make sure that you understand, you know that your patient is understanding what you're saying. Um, explain before you do things. Um, make sure that they understand what you're doing, especially if they can't hear very well. Um, Make sure that you provide hearing aids if they have any. Um, with any of these patients, it's important that you know if they've got hearing aids, glasses, um, because you don't want them to put it on their tray and then for you to take out their tray and to throw it away, because uh, hearing aids cost a lot. Um, find out like what assistive devices that they have. Um, that's important for you to know. Um, you want to watch out for medication toxicity. There are some medications that can cause hearing toxicity and can cause tinnitus. Um, make sure that your patient isn't getting too much of that medication so that they, um, you don't cause hearing loss in your patient. Um, vision, lots of times, again, this is with the older generation, but a lot of um, young people have hear, uh, vision problems as well. Um, some things that can cause vision problems are strokes um, or a brain tumor, things like that, or just genetics. Um, so some things that um, we like what things can cause vision problems also are like glaucoma, just some specific example, glaucoma, cataracts, um, or retinopathy with diabetics. So what do you need to do for this patient? You need to make sure that you explain before you do anything, making sure that you uh, notify them before you do anything because you don't want them to uh, freak out if you start like doing a procedure on them when they don't know what you're doing. I had a patient one time who was blind and I didn't really know how to deal with blind patients and I handed her a donut and she started freaking out because she didn't know what was in her hand. Um, you just need to make sure that you tell your patient exactly what's going to happen. If you're going to give them a donut, make sure that they're going to know that it's going to be this slimy thing in their hand. Um, make sure that you uh, notify them again when you're going to do a procedure. Um, teach them to call the RN before they get up. You need to be there when they're getting up and walking around because it's important for them not to fall because that's a never event. Um, make sure that you stand close to them. If they're only mildly blind, then just get up close. I had a really good friend that was, uh, he was technically blind, but he could see a little bit. And so we'd talk and it, he would be this close to my face. But um, that worked for him. Uh, lots of times with these patients, you can do you can feed them the clock method. So we want to encourage um, as much independence as possible. So when you've got a plate, you can teach them just the clock method, and you can tell them where everything is according to a clock, so that they can eat um, without worrying about uh, not knowing what they're going to eat. Just encouraging independence again. So with touch, um, lots of these patients are diabetics with that neuropathy that kind of gets on the bottom of their feet or their fingers. They can't feel quite as good as they used to. Um, so some things that can, uh, can come out of uh, these touch problems are things like pressure ulcers um, or like somebody can stub their toe and break their, like, break their toe and they don't know it. So you need to teach these patients that they need to assess for if they've got any like anything on the bottom of their feet. They need to check their shoes as well. There was a, a story once of a patient who had this um, this pressure ulcer on the bottom of his foot, but nobody could figure out why he had it. Um, they would check his feet every night, and it just kept on getting worse and worse. And then they looked in his shoes, and there was a nail that had gone through the bottom of his shoe. And uh, he didn't know it, and he just would wear these shoes every day because those were the shoes that he liked to wear. Um, make sure that you look in between every toe. You're checking everywhere on these, on your feet or on your hands, wherever um, you need to check. So with balance, um, these patients, lots of times, lots of medications can cause balance problems. Um, like if they've got blood pressure medications, um, they can cause vertigo or something like that. Um, patients with Meniere's disease, uh, you'll learn more about that in third semester of nursing. but um, 
lots of times uh, they have a feeling that they're going to start to have vertigo and so you need to teach them that they need to get down onto the floor somewhere safe that um, if they start to have vertigo they're, they're not only going to fall like one foot instead of five feet. Um, teach them to call the, the nurse in again. Um, that's basically with all of these, making sure that they call the nurse in before they get up so that we aren't uh, having a fall. Um, so with taste, lots of elderly patients have a problem with taste. Um, something that you can do to help these patients, you don't want to feed them something that tastes nasty to them. So you can give them more salt or you can give them uh, maybe like syrup to help. Um, I had a friend who had this patient that wouldn't eat, wouldn't eat, wouldn't eat. Finally, she just put syrup on everything that she ate and it finally tasted good to her and so she would eat. Um, of course, know your patient. If they're diabetic, you're not gonna wanna put a bunch of syrup on, but you can do, you can do a replacement like salt or something like that. Um, lots of sick patients, of course, don't really have an appetite. Um, you need to make sure that they're getting enough um, food that you're not malnourishing your patient. If um, they aren't eating for multiple days in a row, you might want to bring it up to the doctor and he might order a Dophoff tube to be put in, a feeding tube, which goes into the small intestines. Um, so with speech um, problems, some things that can cause speech problems are strokes, uh, a tumor removal like off of the tongue, so taking out like a glossectomy, taking out part of the tongue, um, a tracheostomy um, or patients who are elderly um, can all start to have speech problems. So um, with these patients, they have a change in how they used to always speak. And it's kind of weird for them. And they, um, you need to make sure that you keep their feelings in mind, especially with all of these. Um, make sure that they have a way to communicate with you, that you aren't just sitting there spewing a bunch of information at them and not giving them a chance to ask the questions that they want to know. Um, don't talk loud to patients with speech problems unless they've got hearing problems, but talking loud is just going to make them more irritated because they don't have hearing problems, they have a speech problem. Um, make sure that you're allowing time in between your thoughts for the patient to ask questions. Make sure that, you under, that they understand what you're trying to say. Um, give them time to verify that they're understanding.